In 2019, I backed the independent horror film 13 Fanboy on the crowdfunding site Indiegogo. When I was a kid, my dad used to lock me in the basement when I was bad. The only thing I had to keep me company was a stack of VHS tapes. Friday the 13th and Halloween. With a premise like this, I was very excited to donate money to the project, get my name in the credits, and get a copy of the film. So was it worth backing this project? Well, let's find out. Minor spoilers are ahead. 13 Fanboy is similar to Wes Craven's New Nightmare in that it includes horror actors who play themselves and are being stalked by a killer. The killer in this film is obsessed with the Friday the 13th movies and targets actors from that franchise. The film opens with the killer stalking and murdering actress Deborah Voorhees, and yes, that's her real name. She just happens to share her last name with Jason Voorhees, which is pretty cool. So Deborah Voorhees appeared in Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, and she actually co-wrote and directed this film. Now her granddaughter witnesses her death, and we flash forward 13 years. The granddaughter is now grown up and acting in horror films herself, and she's buddies with a lot of Friday the 13th actors and actresses. She's also very close with actress Dee Wallace, who was friends with her grandmother and is now like a grandmother type figure to her. So the murderous fanboy returns and once again starts stalking and offing Friday the 13th actors. Now diehard fans are going to recognize all of these people, but they actually include a little blurb when each cast member first appears. It's a little weird at first, but I think it's probably necessary for the uninitiated. And it's a little strange that the fanboy targets Dee Wallace in the first place, as she never appeared in any Friday films. Although the killer does mention that he watched the Halloween series as well, and Dee Wallace did appear in the Rob Zombie remake, but her little title card mentions Halloween 2, which is not accurate. Weird. But I guess Wallace does have a connection to the granddaughter, and in this movie is actually married to Ron Sloan, who played Junior in Friday 5. So I guess she is connected to the franchise in a way. But as much as I love Dee Wallace, I almost feel like it would have been more effective to have a Friday the 13th actress in her role instead. The killer targets different actors throughout the film, and the identity of the Craze fan is a mystery until the end. As I mentioned earlier, 13 Fanboy was a crowdfunded independent film and was made on a budget of $105,000, which is nothing. Seriously, for a feature film, that's pocket change. So you have to keep that in mind going into this. This film also had to contend with COVID and shutdowns and all that crap. So there were quite a few obstacles getting this thing made. Now, what works? Well, the cast is fantastic. Haley Greenbauer does a good job, as does Vicente DeSante and Drew Lady, who are best known for their work in the Friday the 13th fan film Never Hike Alone, which is just fantastic. Oh, and I have to mention the cameo from horror YouTuber Lee McCoy of Drum Dums. Lee has a fantastic channel and is a genuinely nice guy, so it was pretty cool to see him in this. But the real stars, to me, are the former Friday the 13th cast members. It's great seeing so many of them here, and I just really like these people. My wife and I actually had the honor of meeting many of them at conventions, and they are just the nicest people. It was a lot of fun seeing these actors play themselves here, and everyone does a great job. The killer himself looked cool and imposing, and there were some nice death sequences. The score was good, and the movie looked good on a technical level. I also really liked the ending. There was a nice twist, and it was a lot of fun. The basic premise is just fantastic. It's also creepy in that it was based on some truth, with real-life stalker situations that Deborah Voorhees and Friday the 13th Part 1 actress Adrienne King endured. So what about my problems with the film? Well, there were some logic issues throughout with characters being careless and not calling the police. Also, whenever they did call the police, the cops were beyond useless, which got a little annoying. Corey Feldman, who does not play himself here, but instead plays a sleazy movie producer, was pretty over the top. There was also some cheesy scenes and dialogue here and there, but it is a slasher movie, so it's fine. But the biggest issue I had with the film was the sometimes choppy feel of the narrative. It's kind of jarring at times because many scenes are so abrupt. They try to smooth things over with transitions and editing, but it kind of feels like there was stuff missing. Like maybe they ran out of time or money and had to make do with what they had. One character is taken prisoner and held hostage and then just kind of disappears. I believe it's mentioned that she was killed, but we don't see it. But yeah, the sometimes choppy nature of the film would be my biggest complaint. 
but overall I have to say, I enjoyed 13 Fanboy. I know I'm being a little biased, because I'm such a huge Friday the 13th fan, and a fan of all these people who helped make the movie, but I liked it, and I'm happy I backed this project. And hey, there's my name in the credits. Pretty cool, huh? During the crowdfunding campaign, I chose the Prophet of Doom perk, which in addition to getting my name in the credits, included a nice package of stuff. First off is the DVD copy itself, and yeah, it's a DVD. There was no Blu-ray option, which was disappointing, I have to admit. But picture quality was great on this. The movie looked nice on my 75-inch TV and it sounded great, but it's still DVD quality. A remastered Blu-ray would have boosted the clarity and sharpness. No special features are included at all, just subtitles, which is very disappointing. I'd love to get a commentary track, interviews, behind-the-scenes stuff, anything. Maybe one of these days we'll get a remastered Blu-ray special edition. I really hope so because I feel like the film deserves it. My DVD copy includes a special cover which I absolutely love. It's different from the cover of the film that's available on Amazon and in stores. This one was inspired by the very first Friday the 13th poster and damn it looks beautiful. Now here's the problem, it's just a thin cardboard sleeve. It's not an actual DVD case and I'm afraid I'll end up scratching the disc as I slide it in and out so I'll probably buy a DVD case and maybe insert the sleeve into it or something. My package also includes an autographed photo of the lead, Haley Greenbauer, and a poster autographed by director Deborah Voorhees. Interestingly enough, the poster shows Adrian King, who isn't actually in the film. I'm not sure what happened, as I would have loved to see her included here, but maybe she had to bow out at the last minute before principal photography began. It's really too bad she wasn't in this. 13 Fanboy was clearly a labor of love from all involved. The movie may not have fully lived up to my lofty expectations, but you know what? I had fun with this. I was able to escape and enjoy myself for an hour and 41 minutes. And really, that's all you can ask for from a film. Now you can pick up 13 Fanboy for 10 bucks on Amazon, or watch it for free if you have Showtime. So I would say, keep your expectations in check, and give this low-budget, independent film a look. You might have a good time with it. I did.